we had great fun this year during the football season making our picks with Frank imitating various famous people and maybe none of them was more well received than the one with our dear friend Stephen A. Smith who joins us from back up north. Stephen A., can you hear us? I can. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Stephen A., Stephen everybody, a. from All First right. Take, of course, and his radio show on Sirius XM. I hope everyone here in the crowd can hear him. All right, now, Stephen A., we appreciate you being a part of our 15th anniversary celebration. And uh, I am told that Stephen A. Smith and Stephen B. Smith are going to debate this debate, morning. But the, debate the better mic. The better mic. Right. So, Stephen A., uh, because you're nice enough to be our guest this morning, we will allow you to go first. In your opinion, Stephen A. Smith, which is the superior mic on Mike and Mike? Well, I'm trying to figure out whether or not that's a trick question. No disrespect whatsoever to the great Mike Golick, <laughs> but he certainly is not Mike Greenberg, who is sports talk version of the El Capitan himself. The one and only Derek Jeter. He's the captain of the ship. He guides conversation. He knows all the subjects. A matter of fact, I did venture to say that he decides what subject matter is going to be broached. No matter how gifted Mike Golick has proven to be over the last 15 years, in the end, what it comes down to is this. Who is the captain of the ship? Who is the man that stirs the cup? Who is the man that guides and orchestrates everything? I, last time I checked, I think it's the great Mike Greenberg. To me, it's an absolutely ridiculous question. Again, no disrespect to Mike Golick, but there's only one greenie, baby, and that's who I'm rolling with. All right. I, I, I always love the line, no disrespect, but I'm about to rip you. I love. <laughs> He's not ripping you. As yeah. you always say, when you pick one over the other, it uh -huh. doesn't mean you're saying uh -huh. the other is bad. He's just yeah. saying I'm better. So Stephen A. goes with Greeny. Mm -hmm. Stephen B. Smith, what do you think? Yeah. Well, let me just say by start by clarifying as far as Mark Greenberg goes, I mean no ill will, no animosity or acrimonious hostility toward him as I progress with my favorable <laughs> insight and in characterization of Michael Lewis Golick, or simply as one half of the team of the Mike's listening extravaganza that is Mike and Mike. Now I know Mike Greenberg, and he is a friend. And when I say he's a friend, I mean that I'm sitting in the same vicinity, vicinity as him as at this current juncture, but I digress. <laughs> This dissertative verbal essay is supposed to be about positive attributes, qualities, characteristics of Mike Golick, the quintessential everyman. A man who, according to the Dan Lebitard program right here on ESPN Radio, is like the guy on a construction site with plumbers crack working on a sewage pipe and yelling, I need some light down here. He's you. He's me. Well, he's not me. There's nobody who's me. But he's like so many great, hard-working American people. He's also a man who's proficient in professional athletic experience, having been in the trenches of the National Football League for 115 games, compiling three sensational interceptions. I don't care what John Madden said. And in his eight-year tenure with the Oilers, Eagles, and Miami Dolphins, compiled almost 12 entire sacks. <laughs> This is a man who's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Now, speaking of getting your hands dirty, I have to say, I believe in cleanliness. But anyone who takes it to the extreme that Mike Greenberg does, where he would actually wash a bar of soap before using it, <laughs> is at a level of anal retentiveness that my cerebral cortex has trouble contemplating insanity. You can't tell me that if you had to choose to eat a meal at one of their homes, you wouldn't go with the barbecue delights of the... Uh, an assortment of baked goods you could be found at the Golick home as opposed to the carrot sticks and celery assortment found at the Greenberg Dome South. <laughs> now, in some ways, they need each other. Gold, Golick's Yang to Greenberg's Yen. The Oscar Madison to his Felix Un Unger. The Chewbacca to his Han Solo. The Pinky to his Brain. The Silent Bob to his Jay. The Garfunkel to his Simon. The Lenny to his George. The Ernie to his Bert. Not all of these are positive. And last but not least... <laughs> The Patrick to a SpongeBob. You know, come to think of it, after having pondered this great conundrum of Aquarius, and I pontificate before you, my greatest realization that as much as I like Golick and Greeny, uh, they're very little bit. In the end, I really don't like either of you that much at all. The difference is microscopic in nature. It's a round in air, a speck of sand in the infinite that is this great universe. And in the end, the secret after the credits end, when the 99% of the audience has already left the theater, I'd be more. It'd be much more favorable to me finishing off Mike and Mike at a decade and a half and replacing it with the Stephen and Stephen show. So you're listening to Stephen A. and Stephen B. right here on ESPN Radio. Uh. <laughs> uh. Here's the amazing thing. I have to write this stuff down. He can do he can he talk does, like yeah. that off the top of his head. I'll tell you what, man. That's the thing about Stephen A. Smith. He wrote the thesaurus, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen.
Stephen, I don't know what to say. What, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, that was a fantastic imitation by the great Frank Caliendo. I can't deny it. I mean, quite frankly, I think he left out a few words. There's a few more that I have in my arsenal, but I won't bless y'all with that on this particular moment. It's Mike and Mike's 15th anniversary. I will not steal the show by pulling out my thesaurus, but I respect and appreciate the great Frank Caliendo for recognizing it. Kudos. <laughs> Wow. Can, if I can say one more thing. <laughs> this is preposterous. 